In this movie, we'll take an important look at shape order. Now, we can build a scene, we can build a character using multiple layers, and in fact, we will. But there's times that you want to kind of have layers within a single layer, stacking your shapes on a single layer so you don't have to deal with grouped layers or anything like that to make animation easier later on. Well, let's go ahead and do that. We have our our broken window from the last movie where we looked at creating those compound paths, paths or shapes that you can see through to kind of create holes and objects. Well, let's go ahead and add a seat to this and maybe we'll just we'll just throw in a color to do it. I'll grab my add point tool and I'll be outside the box here and I'm going to click and drag and do this a couple times and finish our shape here. Now this might be for a scene where you actually do a close-up and look through the window and animate a perspective change over time. This is much more of a bulbous seat than I want, so I'm going to go ahead and use my keyboard shortcut G, select that shape or that object, press the P key, which is the peak tool, the keyboard shortcut for that, and it squares up these edges really nicely. What I want to do now is to go ahead and fill this with a color. So I'll go ahead and grab my create shape tool. That's highlighted. I'll go ahead and change it to something like oh, a light brown maybe. And now I need to press the enter key to make that happen. And that's changed to a light brown shape. You may want to smooth these corners here a little bit. Keyboard shortcut C for the curve tool. I can go ahead and add just a nice little uh, soft curve to that. Now you'll notice, of course, that this shape is in front of the window. Well, let's go ahead and send that back. We'll come over here to the select shape tool. Keyboard shortcut Q. And with that selected right now, I'm going to do two important things. And I would encourage you to do this as you start building more and more complex scenes. The first thing to do is to name this. And I'll just name this the seat. So now we have a name for it, and it becomes accessible to us under the style palette, under the shapes pull-down menu. We can get to seat directly that way. With this object selected now, I'm going to want to bring this behind the window, and there's two ways to do that. One is to go ahead and use this shape sort tool, and you can see that it says to lower the shape if you hover over it, and then we've got one to raise the shape. I'll go ahead and do lower shape. And if I click off of it, you'll notice what's happened is that it's gone behind one of the breaks in the window. This is important to remember if you're working with shapes that have compound shapes to them. Anime still considers the shapes that make up the holes individual shapes and you'll have to shuffle below those. So by reselecting the shape and pressing the down shape tool, I have to press it multiple times to actually get the entire shape to show up behind the whole window. Now that that's back there, well that looks fine. I can go ahead and select my selection tool, select the entire object, keyboard shortcut S now. I can go ahead and scale this and make it look a little bit more like a window. Use the translation tool, keyboard shortcut T, and get that back there. What if we have yet another shape we want to work with? And just for the sake of argument, I'm simply going to draw a circle in here. And I'm going to give it some garish color like uh, green, but we'll need to do the select shape tool or the create shape tool, and we'll do green right there. And press the space bar to validate that color change. By clicking off of it, now that we see we, or now we see we've got the green shape tool here, or the green shape, go ahead and name this one. I'll use the keyboard shortcut Q to make sure that shape is selected and highlighted. We can see by checkerboard pattern, and I'll just name it the color that it is, green. Using my translation tool, keyboard shortcut T, if I just click that, we'll see that it's grabbing the nearest point to that. So if I actually want to select the green shape, I need to come back and press keyboard shortcut G for our general selection tool. Now I can come back to T, grab this, and move it. I can now go ahead and send this backwards, either using, I need to get back into my select shape tool here. I'll select that. I can use the up and down little shuffle buttons here, or I can actually use the up and down arrows on my keyboard. And I'll have to press that multiple times to get through all those holes. We can see it's faintly lit right now, which means it's selected, but it's behind everything else. If I click off of the shape, we can see now that it's back there, and if I click on top of it, I can't get to it. I'm getting to the window. How do I know it's the window? Well, I didn't name it, so that's not too good. But we can see the color selection that pops up over here in the style palette. 
if you want to select a shape below a top shape because it's hidden. The way to do that is on the Macintosh with the Select Shape tool highlighted. Press the Apple key or if you're on the PC the Control key and then press the down arrow. This will select the next shape below the object. So now with my keyboard modifier Apple key and the down arrow or if you're the PC control key and down arrow. I can go ahead and select and we'll see different objects highlight and kind of ghost back behind the main shape looking at the style palette. We can see that it's changed to tan which is our seat and we see the name verifying that it's a seat shape. Press it one more time and I get the green circle. So there's an easy way to go ahead and select those shapes that may lay underneath your objects. If you want to bring it all the way to the forward, either you can push the up arrow key multiple times, the shuffle key over on the left side multiple times, or this handy dandy little keyboard shortcut, pressing the shift key and the up arrow button. We'll go ahead and bring it automatically all the way to the front. So there's some easy ways to work with multiple shapes at multiple depths, all on a single layer in Anime Studio.